bit of denial that I see what LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Google, I, I see what those guys are doing, but that's really, uh, you know, you live in the Bay Area and it's kind of wacky and, you know, that's, that doesn't affect us. Right. And I, I think the big shift that I've seen in the last year is really each of, you know, every CXO around the globe, across industries, is now starting to see, oh, I, I'm starting to get how this might affect me, my business, and, and how I need to do things differently. And as you probably heard, you know, listening to the keynotes between Joe Tucci, Pat Gelsinger, and then Paul Moritz this morning, uh, you know, these waves happen and they are transformational and you know, the fundamental elements of the stack, if you will, change you know, in each one of these ways for fundamental reasons. And so I, I think the, and I'm sorry, getting a little long no, no, here, that's but I really think interesting. The, uh, you know, the point of commodity hardware trends and kind of scale out architectures, meeting software like Greenplum and Hadoop and you know, kind of technologies to take advantage of the commodity trends and the amount of data that is coming at these organizations or available to the organizations, not just structured data inside of the enterprise, but also unstructured data and then public data. And the idea of how do I start to correlate, correlate applications and solutions and create application frameworks that are agile in nature and you know, more real time, right? Of what's happening in the moment of how I'm going to interact with my customers and and different businesses, and so that's that's profoundly different. Mm -hmm. And so we have to think about things differently on the application frameworks and the rest of it. So that's what we're seeing, and you know, we really like our position. We're very focused on our our product strategy, which is a piece of this, building the stack, including Greenplum, Hadoop, and, and Chorus. But as importantly, or more importantly, would be you know the skill sets of the people. How do we think about? application development in a different way? How do we think about the frameworks of how people are going to develop, whether it's you know, for a particular environment or in the cloud, right? These things need to span that whole spectrum, and we've got to be a good steward of that. We've got to innovate, we've got to drive the technology stacks, and then correlate with the people skill sets. That's why we're doing the Data Science Summit here at the event tomorrow. We have the Green Plum Connect event on Thursday of bringing customers and prospects together to talk about these trends and what's happening. Yeah, so you mentioned you were talking to some analysts, and I, I, I always say that you can, you can sort of see what's happening with a new wave by how the analysts respond to it, because as a former analyst, or a current analyst, but a, a former <laughs> analyst of a big firm, right. analysts can smell a trend, right? And they're, they're, they got territory, they got patch, and they want to protect it, right? So I'm sure you're talking to storage analysts and BI analysts and the sort of new emerging big data analysts, probably some development types. They're all sort of, gravitating around this big data trend, much in the same way they did cloud, much in the same way they did internet. Exactly. And so, uh, my question is, you, you're seeing, at least we're seeing in our, in the car, in our customer base, a real sort of dissonance between the traditional BI guys and the new emerging, you know, the big data purists, the Hadoop and, and, and those guys, where one is looking at it and saying, okay, this is a big opportunity, it's going to change the world. The BI guys are sort of maybe not as convinced you know, trying to figure out how to bring the two together. What are you seeing there? Well, I, I, you know, I think everyone has a different perspective about this, right? And, and it's, not that, it's not that any of them are wrong, right? right? It, it's all kind of point in time discussions mm -hmm. and, and, and the journey. And you know, from my perspective, we're, we're driving innovation to this new world, right? Including Hadoop and, and the overall, overall infrastructure. And, you know, I, 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 again, my experience is you have to be respectful of the environments as they exist today. You have to be complementary to these new, to, to, to what exists and, 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 and start to bridge that gap. And so it's really just a trade off the way I think about it that you don't, you don't, that the, the problem with uh, uh, just focusing on one specific area or one specific framework of what, what may exist today is, you know, it can, it can drag you down candidly in, in what's possible. And right, and so from our from our perspective, what we're trying to do is create an environment and show the world of what's possible, you know, from the technology stack and the different algorithms from an analytics perspective and start to move more towards real time and correlation of events and the rest of it. And then, you know, those dots will connect over time. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, enterprise data warehousing as we know it or traditional BI, those things don't go away. 
it's just really a matter of emphasis, right? Of kind of bridging to the new world and what's and what's what's possible. And so I, I don't, you know, I, I I try not to get caught up in that hype, if you will, and and say, you know, there's a place for everything, but but let's be clear here. There's a there's a fundamental shift going on, and this transformational wave is different. It's not just incremental. It's a it's a fundamental change in in architecture going forward. And I think, you know, the the notion of data and big data and and the connotation around that is really important to get. Yeah. So the reason for my my bringing this up is you know, part hype, but really more a practical uh, uh, factor, and that is that. You know, we are of the belief that every organization has to make data a core competence. Absolutely. And so when you think about the Data Science Summit, you're going to attract a lot of data scientists. And I'm curious as to whether or not you think you'll attract a lot of the traditional BI guys because our premise is those worlds do have to come together because they play important roles in the data strategy of an organization. So what's your expectation there? Yeah, I mean, we've been, I mean, we've been very careful about the positioning and hopefully you guys have picked up on that, that when we talk about data scientists, mm. we, we talk in terms of the data science community. And when we talk in terms of data science, it's really the expertise across that whole spectrum Broad of definition, skills. yeah. Yeah, definitely. BI and data yeah. architects and, and exact line of business executives yep. that all have to be uh, uh, collaborative, right, in those discussions. The data scientist is a, is a, you know, obviously an important part of this and you know, the, the PhDs that get the data models and what's possible with the tools, I don't want to diminish the importance of that, but as you said, I think rightfully, there's a broader ecosystem that we need to connect with, that, that tie this into business value and, and, the, and the rest of it. And that whole community is part of this transformation that's occurring. So that brings me to Chorus. You mentioned collaboration, and so it seems to me that when you have all these disparate sort of groups off doing their own thing, and now you've got this lightning rod of, 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 of data, um, Chorus is sort of designed to facilitate those interactions and, and help people create value. So give us an update on Chorus, and, and is that the correct premise? No, it's exactly the correct premise. I mean, I, I think you know some of the background, and maybe I'll just yeah, pause for a second on, on Chorus. The background on Chorus was, was as we started to work with our key customers and the data science community and data scientists, we were asking them why, you know, when you think about analytics and predict, predictive analytics, why, given these scale-out architectures, why, why aren't we seeing this technology be more pervasive across organizations? More like we're seeing today, candidly, mm -hmm. but this is two and a half years ago yeah, when we started right, right. This, this journey. <laughs> and you know, they identified basically three areas that basically get in their way of, of being more productive. And that was the foundation of, of Chorus. And the three elements were really data access, meaning all the data I need to uh, get my arms around doesn't sit inside of my current database, so right. how do I get access to these data sources that sit inside of my enterprise and outside of my enterprise? That was one problem statement. The second problem statement was around provisioning. When they talked about, hey, I want to do a, 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 a 10 terabyte what if uh, uh, analytic sandbox, that means I call my CIO, I have them roll in a box, set it up, you know, it's, it's you know, months, not days to get this environment set up, that's not where this world needs to go. Buzzkill. I, I need to be able to provision on the fly, right. mouse click, like, like I, I have an expect. idea, I want to go test it. Uh, yeah, right. it's been up a 10 terabyte <laughs> sandbox for mm. me. And so provisioning and virtualization, obviously I work with VMware was really critical to that. And then the third element was this notion of collaboration, the kind of a front end user interface, user friendly tool that allows not only the data scientists and the data architects and the analysts, but the executive and anyone involved in the process to be part of this uh, communication. Like, how do I communicate a good idea? And how do I have them expose the data that I'm working with and my insights so that I can build upon that? Because it's very iterative in, process, in, uh, in, in how they work. And yet there wasn't infrastructure or tools for, for that to happen. And so those were the three foundational elements of Chorus and, and we built it for the community, for this data community, and that's why ultimately we've decided to open source it, as you know, to create it as a platform for people to build applications and solutions and their frameworks on top of. And I think it's an important element of the kinds of technology that need to be contributed to this movement if it's truly going to be transformational. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, Jeff Kelly, the, the lead big data analyst at Wikibon, one of the leading analysts in the, in the business, 
You got the head of Greenplum here. What's, what's the big question on your mind? Well, kind of talking about the open source community, and you know, we're seeing a lot of activity, of course, Hadoop in the open source community and, uh, and some of the peripheral uh, sub-projects around Hadoop. But it seems to me there is certainly a tension between a proprietary approach and the open, open approach. And Greenplum has been you know, very heavily involved, uh, adopted Hadoop very early. Uh, in my opinion, in this movement. So, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, the, the tension between the two, and how do you? How does a company like Greenplum EMC operate in a community that really does focus very much on the open source uh, aspects of the business? Yeah, I, th I, th I think we have to be a good steward of both, right? In some sense, so we we want to be a good a good citizen and, and participant in the open source movement, mm -hmm. including things like Hadoop and and, and Chorus, and and uh, and be part of that community and contribute to that community. But the other side is people are always looking for more features, more uh, scalability, more enterprise type capabilities. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't view it as attention candidly. I, I view it as you, you can be a good participant in both camps, mm -hmm. right? And, and offer uh, 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 proprietary systems or solutions on top of open source solutions. I mean, that was the heritage of Greenplum, mm -hmm. as you recall, coming mm -hmm. going back to our Postgres days. Sure. And I, I, I think the tension that you probably speak to is, you know, how, how do you balance those two right. objectives? And, you know, that's something we want to be thoughtful about and, 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 and be part of the community. I mean, it's, candidly, it's in our self-interest to be involved in the community mm -hmm. and 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 have the community prosper and flourish and get a lot of users, I think that's just not only good from a technology. It's what we believe in in our core mm -hmm. that we want to create a platform that's more universal. We will do quite well as a business, right? If 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 we help with that whole community move towards this new transformation that's mm -hmm. occurring. Yeah, I mean, so, so I don't I don't really view them at odds. It's, it's, it's actually a fairly simple or easy uh, uh, decision from our perspective. We're not trying to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. We're trying to create and build the world's best big data platform, if you will, the combination of MPP technology like Greenplum, Hadoop, we're all in on Hadoop, mm -hmm. and things like Chorus that we'll innovate on top of. And then we want to have a broad ecosystem of partners and solutions that are going to build these new frameworks and new applications for industries and enterprise customers uh, uh, to leverage this platform. So the economics work well for mm -hmm. us, candidly. Yeah, and uh, you know, Tim O'Reilly has a saying, you create more value than you extract. Totally. That's sort of the tenet of, of open systems. And, it, and, it's a, he's, and he says it's a self-serving premise, which I you know, totally believe in. I, I, I uh, totally agree, that's why I don't view it somewhat conflicted. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think from our perspective, you just want to be very genuine mm -hmm. and, and very kind of open about your view of it, and I think we are, and, and we're trying to be that kind of company and, and deliver good, good value, not only to the customers, uh, you know, the enterprise side of this, but also the developers. Right. You know, our, our acquisition of Pivotal Labs was really about the developer community, right. and when you, as you know, you were there, when you, when you kind of peel the onion back, um, you know, what Rob Mee has really built there, even though they do projects and they, and they help people with their application development. I mean, in his core, he's a, he's a trainer. I mean, he's mm -hmm. trying to teach people the agile framework because he fundamentally believes in that. That will help in uh, in in the way you know applications need to get written into the future. And so that's what we're trying to do with uh, with Pivotal because I think those dots do connect around big data agility and these new application mm -hmm. frameworks and kind of the skill sets they, yeah. they bring to the table. That was a great acquisition. Uh, it certainly caught a lot of our attention. Um, bold move, I mean, it's a non-conventional move in, in a way, and, and now it's under green. Have we been known right? to be conventional? Well, no, but, <laughs> but still, I, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of times, I could see a lot of people just talking you out of making an acquisition like that, and uh, I, that had to be one of these, look, it just feels right, we're going to do it type of things. Now, if you, if you can maintain that culture, that is a, I think a huge win because you mentioned you know, Agile. They even talked about DevOps. I mean, they're at the mm -hmm. forefront of, of development trends. You see what's happening with VMware and the big land grab that's going on in the development community. That Pivotal Labs acquisition, I thought, was uh, really outstanding. So. Well, I mean, I, I think we'll take some credit for it, and obviously, you know, Scott Yara was critical that you know, this was Scott's really vision of, uh -huh. of where things are going and, and why it was so important. Us getting to know Rob a little bit and his team was really critical because that's got to be a cultural fit as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, to answer your question, I, I, I think if, if you talk to Joe Tucci or Pat Gelsinger, 
they were equally excited about, ab about the acquisition. Mm -hmm. So even though we, you know, we were the catalyst for it, uh, it was important for us that they understood the positioning and actually became believers in that because it, it wasn't the natural maybe next step of people, you know, it, it did catch some people by surprise. And so uh, to me, that was a reflection on how excited we were about us being acquired by EMC and really signing on to the right company between EMC and VMware to deliver on this mission that we set off to do, you know, many years ago. Right, all right, Bill, well, we just got the, uh, the break sign. Um, Greenplum seems to be doing really well. It, se it seems like the EMC Salesforce is really starting to understand. Um, we're going, we, we heard several months ago, a lot of POCs going on, and now we're, we're seeing those turn into real deals. You get a lot of traction. I think, I'm, I'm personally very impressed. We've seen EMC invest in Greenplum. We've seen other acquisitions. I mean, I'll, I'll you know, note Vertica. And, and HP is in a, not in a position, I guess, right now to invest in. And that's too bad because I think there's some real innovation that, that could occur across the ecosystem, but clearly EMC sees that opportunity. I'm heartbroken You're du that. doubling down, I'm sure you are. <laughs> and, uh, but so congratulations on the progress you've made. Uh, I think it's, it's frankly um, exceeded my expectations. Thank and, you. Uh, and I'm looking, now, now my expectations are way high, so I'm looking for really big things. So good luck with that. Thank you. Thanks very much Thank for coming you. on good the to Cube. See you. Thank you. And, uh, Thanks so much to you. All right, keep okay. it right there. We'll be back. We got uh, 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 Rich Napolitano coming up uh, live from EMC World. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.tv. Keep it right there.